Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Marketing Insights. I'm your host, Yasha Harari. Uh, today I'm just going to have a quick mention about alienating for marketing. And what exactly does that mean and how can you use alienation or alienating people causing division to grow your marketing? Uh, this sounds a bit counterintuitive, especially because I normally like to promote positive marketing and working together and collaborative marketing. Um, and that is true, but underpinning that value uh, is a sometimes extremely useful and extremely efficient and effective method of dividing to conquer, right? Now, sure, there's a whole big debate about whether or not it's right to divide to conquer or should you, you know, what's, what's worth more of your time? Is it better to focus on positive than negative? Well, the fact is in, in marketing, as with in many other things that involve opinions and convincing and influence, um, division is actually very useful. Uh, if you look at recent events like well, the politics of America, right? Who got elected president of the United States most recently? Donald Trump. And obviously he used division very successfully to market himself and become president. And he's been using division, if you think about it, since the very early days of his career. Um, other famous politicians who've done this sort of thing um, include Bill Clinton. Right? He was extremely successful at dividing the population in order to get what he wanted, whether it was to win elections or whether it was to convince people, you know, politicians to support him on policy. Um, his motto was always, you know, if half the people love you and half the people are hating you, you're probably doing something right. And that is a very, very wise lesson. Um, it's certainly one that other leaders in public policy and in business, you know, have taken on and understand and use effectively. Um, I don't want to make this very long didactic about the benefits of using negative or splitting or division um, kind of marketing techniques. But the fact is, division is a very effective strategy in marketing. You can easily pit the group, you know, groups against each other uh, as a way to promote products or more importantly, as a way to filter out unlikely clients. I'm not recommending division or divisiveness as a protocol upon which to base all your other marketing, but it is a very useful filter, right? So say, for example, your client is marketing, I don't know, the latest abortion clinic, right? I mean, why not? They're private enterprises and they're free to market themselves, Planned Parenthood or who knows what. Um, well, let's say your client is Planned Parenthood, okay? And what are you going to do to market them in, I don't know, Iowa or, you know, Florida or wherever you happen to be, you know, representing them for their marketing needs? Well, you know, one way you might do it is to focus on an extremely divisive issue like abortion and use that as part of your marketing theme because you know many people are just solidly against Planned Parenthood no matter what they do, right? Even if they decorated their whole building with nothing but religious icons, the fact that they let people have access to abortion information and abortion services means that the portion of the population will no matter what be against them on ideological grounds, right? Even if it's proven medically to be a healthy thing, they'll still be against it because somebody told them it's against their ideology, right? So, and likewise, there will be an enormous chunk of the population that completely supports them regardless of what they do, right? They could put horrible things on their walls and people would still support you know, what they do because they know it's a necessary thing and they like it and they believe in it and it suits their ideology, right? So you convince, you know, one population to hating you is also to convince the other population to love you. And, you know, if you are in between that and you're a good middleman or a good uh, broker, um, then you can do very well, you know, marketing brands in that way. You can also, by the way, cause division in brands by something as simple as like, you know, causing an argument between people who use Duracell batteries versus Energizer batteries, right? Little known secret, right? Like those two companies, those two brands, they use the same mascot. They fight over the same market batteries for consumers. Um, guess what? If you follow the money, you'll see why that is. It's not by accident that Energizer and Duracell both have that little bunny as their mascot. Um, for those who are interested, look into it. If you can find out how, let me know in the comments or send me a private message. If you're right, and if you're the first person to get it right, I will send you a prize, um, which will be a cool t-shirt. Um, yeah, a cool t-shirt. Why not? We'll do that. Um, for everybody else, I'll reveal the secret in a later episode, maybe. Uh, but in any case, that company um, that markets Energizer and that company that markets Duracell, um, they use division a lot 
a lot more effectively and better than most people realize. Uh, and they are the world leaders of battery sales to individuals with consumer little you know, consumer batteries. Um, yeah. So anyway, point is division divisiveness is an extremely effective tactic. It's also you know, it's also like TNT. You got to be careful with it because I mean if you use it incorrectly, um, it can have disastrous effects. And by disastrous effects, I mean if you divide an audience to the point where everyone hates you or 99% of the population hates you and the 1% that loves you is you know, not good for business, uh, then you should think about what you're doing with that um, and not try that. And maybe tamp it down, change your brand, build a new business, whatever you got to do, put a different persona out front to be your marketing person. Um, you know, Consider your positions carefully so that you're not making massive public policy mistakes. Um, that are also negatively impacting your business. But the point is, you should not be afraid to stand up for your values. You should not be afraid to stand up for high levels of ethics. You should be proud that you do that. And you should be proud of being a good corporate citizen. And you should be proud of contributing to your, to your community. And you should be proud of marketing with high values or whatever you consider to be high values. As long as you're not doing anything evil, there's no reason to promote the values you believe in, right? Um, as long as you're not breaking any laws or doing something stupid, you should be proud to tell people these are the corporate values that we believe in. And if you see things that are ridiculous in public policy that upset you or offend you or whatever, as a you know as an owner of a business, there is no reason for you, or as a marketer of a business, there is no reason for you in your personal space to be afraid of using your freedom of speech. If you live in a society that has freedom of speech, to say what you think, um, and even if you're communicating for a brand, it is possible to say what you think about public policy matters, right? I mean, there is no shortage of companies who have made public policy statements very clear. Um, you know, Facebook has a public policy of being neutral. Well, being neutral is a little gutless, but it is a public policy. That is their stand. You can agree with it or disagree with it, but you know where their value is on that. Google has a public policy, supposedly, of doing no evil. Do they? Don't they? That's up for you to decide. But do they use that in a way that's effective to divide the population to have a discourse about the topic on a regular basis, even if it's not their intention to do so officially? Absolutely. People discuss whether or not Google does evil day in and day out. And there are people on both sides of that fence and they will argue over it ad nauseum, ad infinitum, because it's a constantly debatable topic. And that means that Google puts itself front and center in the topics of the news that are affecting high tech, that are affecting media, that are affecting every little aspect that Google is involved with, which is the entire internet and many things related to it. Um, they use that extremely effectively to their profit to their shareholders liking very much um, and to their users liking or disliking, but even the ones that dislike it, if you think about it, they kind of like it. Otherwise, why would they keep coming back to argue it, right? Like you are attracted to the things you do and you do the things that you are attracted to. So um, if you are attracted to arguing, you are going to go and argue and find a place to argue. Right? And if that's Google's policy, you're going to rant about that. And next thing you turn around, you don't like someone else's policy. You're going to rant about that. Um, so again, Using divisiveness is an extremely effective tool. Use it wisely. Use it well. Don't do evil. <laughs> Not like the way Google says, maybe, or maybe they do. Depends what you believe. But do good. Focus on doing good. And that will always support your business and marketing, regardless of what your position is, as long as you support good ethical values. I know I've ranted on about this now far too long. I'm going to end this here in a short few seconds. And just tell you, uh, remember to go ahead and like this video. Where's that button? No, it's not there, is it? Like the video, subscribe, click the link for laptop or mobile. Depends where you're using. Is it there? I think it's there, the mobile one, right? And the laptop one is here, or desktop. Um, subscribe, follow, visit our site. Come on board, Marketing Insights. We're all about teaching and sharing marketing insights and marketing information for really top-notch marketers who want advanced information. And even newbies can learn a lot from this. Uh, we may speak a little jingoistically sometimes, myself or people that I might interview, but uh, not jingoistically. We might speak a little bit too much technical jargon, and industry jargon, but you'll get used to it or you'll learn it, and we'll certainly teach it to you if you subscribe and sign up. And of course, be sure to uh, take our advanced marketing course if you are ready to take your marketing to the next level. Uh, information about that is on my website, yashaharari.com. 
I thank you for being here because you are literally the reason that we do this video. So thanks for you know coming around. Don't stalk, or if you do, well, that's fine. But I prefer if you made noise. So let us know what you think. Share your opinions. Tell us we suck or you love us or I don't care what. Just make sure you're honest. And we hope to see you again uh, for the next edition. Until then, take care.